Hey, this is Rick from Hiking Emergency Beacon, and today I want to tell you about my brand new GPS map 66i. It's a Garmin inReach satellite messenger. But before we get into that, please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted as soon as I put out new videos. So I got this uh, 66i, for, I'll call it that rather than GPS map. Um, I got it about uh, oh, about two months ago. A month, no, about about a month ago, and I've I've practiced with it a little bit, and I've already taken it out on a fishing trip, some hikes, and um, there's a lot to learn about this thing. So I'm just going to give you kind of a, an early heads up on this. I'll, I'll do more in depth uh, videos on it later as I, I learn more. Um, bottom line is, it's a super high tech in my opinion. Um, it's got so much on it that it kind of makes me want to go back to my Garmin inReach Mini 2, uh, which I have uh, right here. So let me give you a quick rundown of my first impressions, and uh, like I said, we'll get into some more detailed videos later on. All right, first of all, size-wise. You can tell, and, and not by weight, of course, but you can tell just by looking at it here that the, the 66i is about twice the size of the Garmin inReach Mini and or the Mini 2. You can see right here and thickness wise it looks a little bit thicker because I have an attachment on the back for the backpack tether but they're about the same thickness. It's about you know almost twice as high tall or uh, yeah height wise and uh, size wise it's um, about twice as heavy and you can see the specs i'll put some specs up on the screen of both of these so you can see the difference um, not just what i'm telling you but what it what the specs show i also want to take this time right now to just tell you i i have i think four backpack tethers i have four garments or five and this is just the best way to, to carry if you uh if you're packing uh maybe you have a motorcycle maybe you know whatever it might be you take a look at these backpack tethers because they they hook to your 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 strap wherever you want to hook them to they have velcro on both sides it comes with this uh, attachment um and if you drop it you don't lose it right so that was we, these these things cost a lot of money um so not only is it convenient to have it here and be able to pull it off your pack um, but if you um you don't you know you drop it you don't lose it over a cliff or in the water so um take a look at those I'll, I'll have information on the screen and also in the description below uh they're not that expensive and it's it's really worth it the other comparison i wanted to give you real quick too was with the garmin se plus um it's the same as the size and, and everything as the garmin explorer plus uh, so i wanted to compare show you that see they're about the same size uh thickness and everything now I'm going to give you my opinion on something here real quick. Um, I believe the um, the 66i is the newer device. And uh, there's three deer running right by me. That's so cool. Being out here in Colorado, there's four. Um, these uh, mule deer. And then once in a while you'll see a, a bear and all and, and elk. But pretty cool out here. Um, so... I was talking to to um, customer Garmin customer service, and I was talking to them about you know, hey, are you going to come out with something to replace the Garmin in InReach Explorer Plus? And they said there was no information on it right now, or at least that they could tell me. But they told me to this one guy told me he uses the 66i, and it basically does everything that the Garmin InReach Explorer Plus does. So I took a look at it, and sure enough, he's he's correct. Um, but I want to give you a heads up real quick. The battery life on this is only, depending on how you use it, it's only um, about uh, maybe a day and a half to two and a half days. Very short battery life compared to the Garmin InReach Mini, Mini 2, Explorer Plus. They'll last for a week or two. Again, I'll put that information up on the screen, the battery life comparing these and the Explorer Plus. So this is where I've really struggled with this device. Um, one super high tech it, compared to this mini 2 which had a lot of stuff on it this is just overwhelming even for me at times and I have a lot of uh, uh, satellite messengers I'm used to them I you know the, anyway um, it's I'm just giving my first impression okay if you're a real tech person and you love lots of things on your device this is a really good way to go um, I I will say 
that after I've gotten used to it and talked to Garmin, uh, the customer service, I understand it better. I, I know um, how to use the things that are important to me. It is nice that on this you can um, you can move things on your on your main menu home screen to the, the things you use the most you can put to the top so that's really nice but let's get back to the battery life for a minute when this doesn't last very long and you're going to go out on a long outdoor trip this is where i struggle with this one to me just giving you my my personal opinion is all these videos really are right it's how i use them what's how you know i hike and, and fish and hunt here in colorado how do i use them um this is really more of a day hiking one two-day adventure um it it's got everything you want basically on it uh with the exception of uh they, they have a, a an interactive weather map but you can't use it unless you're within wi-fi um but it because it only lasts for a day and a half to two days, it's really for short trips. Um, I, I, I mean, this is something here. I think that you know a lot of people who are taking a week long trip, four or five days, they'd want this device. I'd have to disagree at this point, uh, unless you carry a battery backup, a, a charger, a portable charger. Uh, then, then that's okay. Um, I, if you're going to go out on a long trip, I still would then go back to the Garmin InReach Explore Plus because that's got everything on the device itself, maps on screen. You don't have to sync to your cell phone. You can, but you don't have to. That one there will last like several weeks. I just, this is a struggle I have on this one. I re, so, so it, it, my, so let me finish my personal thoughts on this. I think this is for high-tech people, people who love maps and everything, um, don't want to have to sync to your cell phone uh, to, to send messages out. This is great. If you're going to go out for one, two days, or you're out fishing, camping, and you have the ability at your campsite or your camp or whatever you have, and you have the ability to charge, this is great. Charge it up. Um, but if you're going to go out backpacking and you're out for long periods of time without the ability to charge, I would then say go to the Explore Plus or the Garmin Enrich Mini 2. The issue with the Garmin Energy 22, though, is you have to have it synced to your cell phone. Then your cell phone will lose uh, charge again. you got to go back to the portable charger. So um, enough of that personal opinion. But you can tell already because I'm going back and forth on this here. It's been a real struggle for me uh, because of the short battery life. Okay, let's stop talking about my opinion right now about this. And let's go into some details of what I found out hiking. So um, I'm going to... Um, well, so the power here is on the top. This is similar to any other Garmin. The, uh, it has more buttons uh, on the front. And what made it really nice having all these buttons is the, it's so much easier to, man, to maneuver around on the screen, um, even text over the Garmin Energy Mini 2. On the Mini 2, you have to, there's an OK button, a back button, and there's an up and down. And you, it's, it takes more time to type in a message on the Mini 2 if it's uh, not synced to your phone than it does on the uh, 66i. I'll put screenshots up of everything I'm talking about here so that you'll be able to see it better uh, on the screen. Um, so uh again right so right here the first thing that comes up with me to me here it has a map um you can hit so on the bottom is there's a quit and an in, uh, enter quit and enter these are some of the two main buttons you use plus these arrow keys here and there's a plus and minus you can zoom in out on the map but if you're typing a message in like you, if it says quit here but so you quit the map and then down at the bottom of the screen it goes to main menu and then you can keep hitting quit to you say you get over to messages and then you hit enter um and and then i've got a whole lot of messages here and then you you arrow down say you've already started a message and you arrow down you click on it and then you go down to um to reply and then you can type miss uh type message send quick text or send location um so when you type in select a type message that's when it goes in um there's a box it has a, and it has all the key at the keypad below and then you just arrow it around using these arrows here you arrow around um select the letters and and it's nice because it comes out up with um suggested words so a lot of times you don't have to type in the whole word it makes it easier to text um, so it, it's pretty easy to do. I, I would just make sure when you when you get one of these that you just test it when, before you go out in the field. Um, the other thing that was really important down here at the bottom, it's um, 
I don't know if you can see it here, uh, but it, you'll have a screenshot up. It says uh, send location. And so when you hit that send location, it's basically sending another text message or a message, um, but it's sending your exact location. So um, this is was really important when Mike, uh, a friend of mine and I, we were out fishing. He was coming from Oklahoma. I was already up here. I, I We went out. I knew there was no cell service in this place we were at. So I, I went and found a campsite. I left work early on a Wednesday. We started our, our fishing trip on a Wednesday. I went up and I was up there by, I think, three o'clock and I found a campsite. And uh, because it's first come, first serve, um, you know, I didn't know where we were, he didn't, neither of us knew where, where we were gonna be. I was able to send him a message, uh, a location message. So uh, even though there's an interesting story in there where he went like 30 miles out of the way because he, and he, didn't, he only needed to go eight miles, um, we learned some lessons about that, um, but but see here's another thing about the message the location the the Montana 700i which he had it was new to him and he'd never had one of these before and so he was trying to find where I was at and I was sending I sent him probably over like an hour and a half because I figured he was in the wrong spot um, he had my location. But he sh it should have only been 25 minutes to get to where I was at. I, I sent him probably three or four times. I sent him a message saying, send me your location. Well, he didn't know how to do it. And he didn't send a message back saying, you know, I, I don't know how. Um, and so if I, if I could have seen his location, I could have told him in a message, you know, hey, you're, you're going the wrong direction. That's, that's you know, come back, turn around. Um, also remember, when you're do using these satellite messengers, um, they um, take anywhere from say a minute to three minutes, I would say on an average two to three minutes to send and receive messages. So you have to be a bit more patient. Uh, one thing I had seen with uh, my son when we were out on another hike, he had his phone, he was messaging me. Um, he was basically spamming me with messages and, and I, I, he would send like six to eight messages and I'm still trying to get one message out to him, right? Because not only is it harder to message, without having it synced, um, it just takes longer for it to go through the satellite system. So just be aware of, of that. All right, let's get back to a few more things on this device. So if we're talking about the messages and sharing locations, um, I'm gonna discard this, discard changes, and I'm gonna get out of here. So then I, there's the map, the main menu. Um, on this thing, there's a um, altimeter. It's nice also because yeah, it shows you information about your elevation, how fast you're moving, direction. There's a compass, and there are back to messages. These are all things that scroll along the bottom of the screen. Um, this is not a touch screen. Um, Mike's uh, Montana 700i, it's a touch screen. It's twice this big, twice the size. Uh, but he has an ATV, and um, he uses this a little different than, than I use it. I, I'm out more on hikes, and uh, I don't want a really big device. So, but anyway, going back, let's go to the main menu. And on the main menu, again, on this device, you can uh, move things that you use a lot, move them up and re so relocate them. I, I learned that when I was talking to uh, Garmin customer service. So I've got, there's a setup. When you go into setup, there's a whole lot of another set of uh, menus here. Um, display, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, tracking, messages, contact. This is all about the setup um, and, and um, you know, the, the settings, right? So on back on the, um, the homepage here, there's, uh, you can do messages, SOS, in-reach weather, uh, waypoint manager, route planner, active route, course planner, uh, collections manager, tracking, photo viewer. I haven't figured out the photo viewer yet because uh, you can't take photos with this, I don't believe. Um, I haven't, so I was, uh, or I was actually trying to upload a video. Uh, we're still working on that. Like I said, um, this is still new to me. And just, can you can tell a little bit by what I'm saying, just by like talking about all the stuff on it. It says in-reach utilities, recording controls, notifications, active weather. Again, active weather, you cannot use it unless you you have, uh, I, I wanna say, I, I, I know, you, um, I may be incorrect on this one part. You either have to have cell service or you be in Wi-Fi, which is kind of crazy because like, you know, when the active weather, you get to see a map and where the actual storm is and the, the hot parts of the storm, like the purple and the red, and, uh, where the intense core is at or the lightning uh, or, or hail, right? Uh, I would love to be able to see that out in the mountains, but you can't, just giving you a heads up on that. Geocaching here, 
Um, there is uh, recorded activity, save track, sight and go, uh, proximity alarms, share wirelessly, profile change, area calculations, calendar, hunt and fish, sun and moon, waypoint averaging, calculator, alarm clock, uh, VR, VIRB remote, not use that, uh, stopwatch, flashlight, X zero location, satellite. So the satellite, kind of nice, you can click on it and you can see all the satellites that are in the sky, at least you know on here it shows how many, usually there's like eight or 10 satellites up. Uh, there's the map and compass and trip computer. As I'm saying, if you're more of a minim minimalist and um, this stuff is, is not uh, something you wanna deal with, and you want to be able to communicate or you want to see a map or um, you just want to do a few things on your on your satellite messenger or call for help if you had a life-threatening emergency you know this may not be it because it is a bit overwhelming uh, even for me now the one thing I will say I like about this we were on a um, uh, hiking segment one of the Colorado Trail uh, about three weeks ago and I, I thought I had my phone synced, but I didn't. I had to call uh, Garmin and, and talk to them because what happened um, on the app, um, you had to go into the app and I'll, I'll see, well, let's see if I can just show you here with some on-screen stuff. I had to go into the Explorer app and, and then I had to go into devices and then there's my device showing here. Now, here's where um, I didn't see any instructions on and, and they walked me through this. At the top right of this is a, um, hang on one second, let me go back to devices. So at the top right, it, it, when, it's, when you go into devices, it shows a plus sign at the top, and I think that's for adding another device. That's not what I'm talking about. When you clip, click on like the 66i, this is where there are three little buttons at the top right. You know, like you click on it and another set of menus come up, right? When you click on those three little devices, there's a, uh, it's not a lot here, but it says help and remove device. So this is what I had to do. I had to remove the device by clicking on this, then go through and then set up uh, it um, syncing. So without removing the device for me on this particular occasion, um, it, it just, it wasn't working. So. Just a heads up, sometimes um, things don't work and you have to uh, practice and test, right? So what happened, um, um, the, the thing that was nice about having the 66i this time is because it's a standalone device completely, uh, harder to text, right? Harder to message. But because of that, um, my son had gotten in some trouble on, on a hike. Um, we were 15 miles in. I had turned back because I had experienced some trouble, but I knew I wasn't going to make the, the, the hike uh, or finish it. He was about four miles from the end of the trail. Um, severe pain, had a lot of trouble. Didn't I, We didn't know if we were going to have to contact search and rescue. Uh, so we were communicating back and forth with him. And because I didn't have my cell phone synced, I wasn't able to message real fast on my phone, right? But I was able to do everything on this device. I could message rather rapidly compared to the, the Mini 2 or the Mini. And we were able to communicate still. And I didn't have to worry about having my phone sync. So this is a nice thing about having the Explorer Plus, the 66i. I'd probably have to throw in there the Montana uh, 700i and the 750i. Um, those are basically uh, everything's on the device itself. You don't have to have it synced. Um, so just throw that, uh, throwing that out, there's, there are some nice things about this when you can do everything on the device itself and, and it doesn't have to be synced. So, um, you know, I'm not going to go a whole lot more into this device right now. Um, I'll have, like I said, I've been showing you screenshots. Um, I'm still really struggling with, um, with these because Garmin, uh, the Garmin inReach devices are my, my favorite devices. And, and I want to throw something out real quick to you because I learned this just recently. The Garmin inReach devices are really more of, um, they're about messaging, right? They're about getting SOS uh, help. Uh, they're about being able to two-way message. Uh, somebody was asked me one time, um, they said, hey, I've got a, the fact they had a Mini 2 or a Mini. And they said, yeah, I, I can use it. And I don't, I don't care about messaging. And they asked me a question. And I, so I called customer service and I was talking to them. And they said, yes, you know what, you can, 
you can use a lot of functions on these Garmin devices without having a subscription. So be aware of that. If messaging and SOS and all that are not important to you, you don't have to have a subscription. But here's the deal. There are other Garmin devices that are less expensive that would do the job for you better than the inReach devices. These inReach devices are about communicating um, part of it. Part of the importance is about communicating. And in order to do that, you do have to have a subscription. All right, I've gotten long-winded, so let's wrap this thing up. I don't like bigger devices. Mike has a Montana 700i, twice as big as this. He uses it more for an ATV issue, right? It's okay. I really like the size of the, of the Mini 2. And when it's synced to my phone, and I'm out for just day hikes or you know just short outdoor adventures, this one I don't even hardly realize is on my pack. It's very small. And then when I can pull my phone out and I can see the maps and everything on my phone, and it just I've used it so much, it it, it it's um it, you know, yes, it can lose I can lose the sync, I can have a technical issue. And then I'd be back to trying to use the device itself to send a message, which you can, it just takes longer. Um, versus this, twice as big. Um I know it's not twice as expensive, but I'll put the price, the current price up on the screen, but I paid around $600 for this. Um, more expensive, right? Uh, there's more to it, but the cost is greater. Uh, you really have to um, really look at how you use it. And, and please send me a questions. I get questions all the time about them. And um, it, it depends on how you use them. If communication is your number one priority, I, I'll give you advice. And I, I, I actually think uh, there's another device called the Zolio that's better if if all you want is to communicate that may be the better way to go if you're on a long take longer trips you know done again you know the explorer plus uh, might be the best way to go um, so depending on how you use it what you like um, what's important to you I, i'll give you my advice on, on and kind of steer you to what i think are the better options okay so there it is my first impressions of the 66i the Garmin inReach GPS map 66i, we'll just say 66i to keep it short. Great device. It is one of the more expensive devices I've ever bought, um, but uh, it, it does a great job. Uh, so it's, um, it's worked really well uh, after I got it all set up right. It's worked really well out on a long four or five day uh, hike, uh, fishing trip and where we had no cell service. Love the device. Again, I'm not sure if it's going to be my go-to device. I may be back with the Mini 2 as my number one device I use, uh, but we'll see. I've, there's other devices out there, and I'm going to keep exploring them and, and checking them out. So that's why. Please like, subscribe, and share. Turn on notifications because I'm buying these, and uh, sometimes uh, maybe they I won't have to buy them at some point in the future, but uh, I get them and I try them out. I test them in the field. So you get a real world experience of what it's like using them, not just uh, reciting something else that somebody put on uh, another website. So uh, turn on that notification and um, thanks for hanging out and watching and uh, uh, I'll have some more videos coming up. I'll be comparing these to some other devices um, and I'll, I'll have much more in the future. So thanks for joining me here in Colorado uh, hiking emergency beacon and I'll see you out here next time.